Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. However, given the events that transpired yesterday, we're on to a new game today. We finished all of the original Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney game, but now we can play Justice for All. And more importantly with Justice for All is the inclusion of a new game mechanic and two vastly important characters. One being a new prosecutor and second being an integral character for the rest of the next two games. So, let's get started, shall we? Same deal as before, going through all these cases. I'll do my best to try and get through this first case in about two episodes, give or take, but knowing that I'm voice acting it, it might take a little longer. But I will try and make this two, so we can start next week fresh with case two, two. But let's begin episode one, The Lost Turnabout. My plan is to make sure that these games are in separate... Um, separate playlist so you don't have to watch all the gigantic playlist if you don't want to. How did I get into this mess? That's far enough! You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright! Yeah. What have I done wrong? I cannot allow it to go on like this. But I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. As stated at the beginning of my first playthrough, my, my goal here is to mimic voices that I see or have seen on the Ace Attorney anime to the best of my ability, or if I can't really do their voice properly, I'll try my best to find a solution to that. Um, as people saw with Manfred von Karma, my voice doesn't exactly go very low, or stay very high, but hey, at least today it shouldn't be too bad. They're all fairly normal voices. Eh. What a nightmare. I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. We really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. Eh? Looks like they hung up. Ah, oh, good. I finally found it. Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal. Mr. Attorney. A few minutes later. Uh, ow! My head's throbbing. Why does this feel so foggy in here? Good morning! Uh, good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. We're just a fighting spirit. Could you please turn the cheeriness down? My head sort of hurts. Uh, roger that! Am I in trouble or something? Trouble? Uh, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. I'm placing my life in your hands, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Life in my hands? You promised me. You said you'd prove that I was not guilty. Not guilty? <laughs> Just when I thought all hope was lost, when every other lawyer laughed me off. <laughs> Leave it to me, you said. The one and only Phoenix Wright came to save my day. Just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. 
I'll never forget what you're doing for me. Not ever! What is this girl bab babbling on about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Sorry. I'm afraid to ask, but... This might sound bad, but... Who are you? What? Mr. Wright? How could you say that? How could you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible! No, I mean... Uh, is this how a defense attorney treats their clients? I can't believe this! Uh, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes? I'm... Uh, who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? I guess I have amnesia. Let's see. From the sound of things, it's safe to say I'm a defense attorney. And the girl said I should prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Ugh. So tell me, this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this one dream that I won't be waking up from it? Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Burt. The prosecution's ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys in here? I guess not. Now then, are you ready? I guess I should say yes for now. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. If her life's in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually, you see, my memory's kind of... The court will not hear defense excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make the trial fair and swift. I believe I've told you this before. I hope you've not told me or forgotten. Actually, I have. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defense... The, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what? It wasn't me! Besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> It's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I will show mercy on you this time, rookie. Okay. And who are you again? The prosecution calls Dick Gumshoe to the stand, pal. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct. You don't look well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, uh... You work under that guy? I guess, sir. And while I'm a trainee, he's always looking out for me. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. He reminds me of Mike Meekins without the... I'm Mike Meekins, sir! <laughs> So it's it's like I'm using his tone of speech, his manner of speaking, but in a normal way. Okay, calm down, I believe you. Detective Gumshoe, 
Please describe for us the details of this murder. Uh, yes, sir. It happened at the park near the headquarters. Expose po Well, that's a name. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. He was pushed down the benches to the upper path, sir. The landing beat the, his body up pretty bad and it snapped his neck. The details are as listed in the report I distributed to you yesterday. This autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? I see everything is in order. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirmed the time of death. If I may, your honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well, the court accepts this into evidence. Now then, I recall yesterday's preliminary hearing. A very imp important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. I have yet. Uh, I guess? Mr. Ryder, is your head on straight today? There's a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like that and s like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. All right. I'll help you through this. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. Yep. Info about evidence and people involved in this case are all listed. This is a tutorial mission, by the way. Forgot I mentioned that part. You can look at the court record by pressing R1. You really know what you're talking about, don't you? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright, court is in session. Save your chit-chat for later. Sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I better check. What was it again? All right, Mr. Wright, let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? It's a broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed the killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir and held on to him as he fell. Hey, what are you giving me the evil eye for? Those glasses. Eh. Yeah, it's my spare pair. But these glasses were found at the scene of the crime. They're not mine, I swear. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day, I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence. <laughs> Your Honor, <laughs> I have further evidence to present. Ah, you have more? And this as evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. There's something even more incriminating about the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench. But he managed to write the culprit's name where he landed. I don't like saying it. It clearly says the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. This is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. This is... I can see her name clearly written here. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. This court accepts it into evidence. As if the glasses alone don't make you suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day. But, but I told you! They're not mine! How do you explain this message? It's a conspiracy! I'm not guilty! Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. This is it. I'm counting on you. But what am I supposed to do again? What? This isn't like you at all! Normally this is the part where you get in their faces. You point their finger and you do stuff. You say objection and whatever. Okay, I'm gonna lend you a hand. Just 
point at them and say objection a lot. It works. It works perfect. The prosecution witness and the witnesses all hide things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. But isn't your detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people remember things wrong. Like that detective. He looks sort of like a scatterbrain. Doesn't matter! It's bad for us! That's why you gotta question witnesses. You gotta find and expose lies. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. As long as I can expose their lies, we should be okay. So, this one's... This one's pretty obvious. So let's get to profiles. And this is the contradiction. The fact that the name is wrong. Objection! And as stated in the earlier game, the way you know that the game is on the right track is the music track stops and the health bar goes away from the screen. That's your tip off that you've done correct. What is it? Huh? What came over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out, OBJECTION! And I yelled at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. <laughs> In the anime version, every time this happens, a gust of wind blows them back. It's crazy. What a rush. Detective Gumshoe! Are you talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. I'm not doing his objection, by the way. That's way too fucking horse collar for me. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. It's a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, you can answer the defendant's name. Where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's name is... Maggie Bird. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right... Ah! Looks like birds caught the cat napping. What's going on here? I have no idea, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave the name Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled E-Y. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. I see. How about that? I never noticed. But maybe the victim didn't know how to spell. What? May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover? If they were truly lovers, it'd be impossible for him to not know her name. Yeah, that, that would be insensitive. Okay. Um. All right. Cool statement. Okay. Cool. Yeah. This is very true, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Yes, I'm quite certain. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and defendant. Yes, yeah, sir. Also, I'm changing Gumshoe's voice because he, he's constantly... Uh, I'm constantly changing who's talking and his voice gets lost. In. Officer Prince and Maggie Bird were going out for half a year. And it sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Maggie, you mean Officer Bird gave Miss Officer Prince a present. It was something she'd bought over two months ago. I should know, because she came to me to ask what to get him. Now, those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright.
Over two months ago? Yeah, she's very considerate, pal. So, what was this birthday present? She got him a glove. A glove? Why would she only give him one? Um, actually, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see, a baseball glove. It was a huge baseball fan. Just now, but I believe you said you that the present was something she bought over two months ago. Well, yeah. You saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? Nah, nothing like that, pal. What was it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom? The glove was custom made? Yeah, that's what I said. Your Honor, I really don't see how the glove is related to this case. It seems a little relevant. What do you think? Do you think this glove is really relevant to the case? Of course it is. I don't know, but... Hmm. Of course it's relevant. Uh, buff it to the max! Now this is the Mr. Right I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it would take. That's great! Pressing people. Feels like I've done this before. For 45 episodes! I'm wondering if you can use this to squeeze information out of people. Very well, if you're that convinced, then let's hear some more about this matter. Actually, I brought it with me today. And? Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry up and show it. I didn't think it had anything to do with the case. But this is it, sir. It's rather yellow, isn't it? Officer Brent's really liked the color yellow. That's why you had it special ordered? Yeah, that's right. And one other reason. I think this court has heard enough. It's clear that the victim and defendant were involved. Yes, that's correct. Now, if that's true, this brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't really confirm it was the victim's. Next, we checked the victim's pointed finger. We found that there was some sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches under his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we can confirm the victim wrote the name with the right hand. A perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, because if you turn it upside down, it's on his right hand. So that would mean that his throwing hand would be left-handed. So that's what they're going at here. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to see the way they shape it. Uh, take a look at the glove. Could you tell the court what's special about this glove? What's special? I never really thought about it, but uh, it's really yellow. That's about it. It's really yellow. It's the only one of its quality. There's another reason why it's special. It's very simple. The glove is made for a left-handed person. Left-handed? Why, you're absolutely right. The glove's made to be worn on the right hand. That's why it had to be custom made. Well, I've never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? So, Detective, which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious from the... Oh! Don't forget the victim was left-handed. Ah! That is... That is... Uh, overruled. Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There's only one conclusion that can be drawn. 
A left-handed person could not have written the message with, the with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote Maggie could not have been the victim. Order! When you think about it that way, then yes. It's not possible for the name to be written by the victim himself. And that means... No? That's not possible! Uh, yes, your honor. The evidence the prosecution has presented failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you've proven her to be innocent. The innocent. Ah! You did it, Mr. Wright. I feel like I breathe again. It seems we've reached a conclusion. You did a fine job again, once again, Mr. Wright. Well, thanks, sir. You got complimented by the judge again. You're pretty good. That's why you can't give up on being a lawyer, sir. I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds it. Uh, not yet! I mean, please give me a few more minutes. What's the meaning of this? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We'd like to call our next witness to the stand. What? And what did this witness witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the cult. What the hell? Order! I believe a recess is in order. Afterward, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling this would be too easy. I need more information. I'll have to see what I could find out what I can during recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess. As is this video. Because we will save. Yay! With a new jingle and everything. But yes, let me save. And if you're wondering, I use multiple saves just in case. Though this game has done a good job of not breaking in most cases. But if I have to go back and rewatch something or whatever, if the recording doesn't work, then hey, it's always a good policy. That said, today was the first episode of Phoenix Wright Justice for All. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.